you know how to identify agave utensis borospina as opposed to nevadensis, subspecies utensis, or even cababensis? That's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to go back through the historical record to the first descriptions of Eborospina back in the 1940s, all the way up to the 2010s and even later, and talk about the taxonomy of Eborospina and how Eborospina has been described and defined by botanists throughout history and how we can understand if a plant that we're looking at, is this Eborospina or is it not Eborospina? Indigenous communities have been using agave utensis for thousands of years, but it was first described by botanists in 1943 by J. Pickney Hester, actually in the Cactus and Succulent Society of America Journal, which back then was called the Cactus and Succulent Journal. And in describing it, he called it somewhat glaucous, from courage green to silver green, with terminal spines that are elongated, slender, pungent, straight or sinuate, brown in youth, ivory in age, usually curved inward, 10 to 20 centimeters long, and six to 10 millimeters wide at the base. Now those courage green and silver green are um, from the Dictionary of Color, and they basically describe what, what he calls somewhat glaucous green leaves. So that first description of Eborospina, we have mention of two key aspects that generally help us identify Eborospina in the wild even still today. The first one is those long spines, and he's really specific when he says that those spines are 10 to 20 centimeters long. And for all my freedom unit friends here in America, uh, that's four to eight inches. And then he describes that they are glaucous. They do have that waxy powdery coating. And so they are a little bit gray, I guess, but uh, they are uh, courage green to silver green. So the, the leaves are in fact green in his description. Moving forward in time from 1943, from that first description of agave utensis borospina to Howard Scott Gentry's Agaves of Continental North America, a seminal book on agaves that I talk about every week, he describes borospina again, as having terminal spines that are between 10 and 20 centimeters long. Again, that's four to eight inches long, uh, with large, thick, he calls them ivory white spines, uh, teeth larger, and he talks about them being coarse and crooked. Um, and then he goes on to, to, to elaborate that variety of borospina, when well-developed, is very distinctive. The large, elaborate, ivy-white spines making it easily recognizable. And he compares this with Nevadensis, which he says has terminal spines of only three to eight centimeters long, slender, brown to whitish, with their teeth being relatively small. So here you see two uh, traits carried over from the Hester description, from the 1943 first description, uh, of those long terminal spines, 10 to 20 centimeters long, four to eight inches long, uh, and much longer than Nevadensis's, which are only three to eight centimeters long. And then again, that description of ivory white spines. Hester is a bit more specific in that he says those spines are generally brown in youth and become white with age, which is also something that I've seen uh, here in cultivation, is that the, the younger spines, which are at the center of the plant, tend to be darker in all forms of agave utensis, whereas the older spines, those are the ones on the outside of the plant, tend to be the, the, the white spines. But I've also seen in Habitat, and I've posted some video before, um, where agave utensis, eborospina plants, plants that definitely fulfill that, you know, the, the coloration, the green coloration, and the long spine traits, um, have banded color spines, basically spines that are both brown and white in alternating bands. And so jumping forward in time again to 2008, Zlatko Geneva's article in the Cactus and Succulent Journal, uh, he talks about uh, the clear distinction between Nevadensis and Eborospina, writing uh, that Nevadensis has smaller rosettes, more bluish leaves, larger teeth, and a more elongated spines than the Utahensis type, right? So that's, that's how Nevadensis differs from just what I call regular degular Utahensis. It's smaller, bluer, and has larger teeth. Eborospina, which he again calls the ivory spined agave, is the most distinctive, he says. To my eye, the most beautiful with extremely long, up to 15 centimeters, he says here, ivory white spines at each tip. And he goes on to state that agave utensis eborospina actually also bears the distinction of being the northwesternmost uh, member of the entire genus agave. In 2010, Geneva, in a, a Czech cactus uh, and succulent journal called Cactusi, I guess, 
uh, writes about Ibor Spina and describes him as having uh, medium-sized rosettes. Uh, they're cespitose, which means they produce a lot of pups from the base, as most of the members of the Agave Utaensis species do, uh, with rosettes up to 60, 60 centimeters across, usually smaller. The terminal spines, again, 10 to 15 centimeters long, uh, with ivory white, usually straight, sometimes curly, especially in, in young plants, uh, and then flowers and seeds like the rest of the uh, species. But again, you have uh, Geneva in two different uh, descriptions here in, in 2008 and in 2010, uh, referencing that, that 10 to 20 centimeter long terminal spine uh, and the, um, you know, the ivory white spines. And then since uh, Gentry and Geneva wrote about Utensis, there's been a little mix up and, and some, I guess, disagreement about the actual taxonomy of Ibor spina. And the question basically is, is it a variety underneath subspecies Utensis? or is it its own subspecies of utensis, right? So basically that would be, is it agave utensis, subspecies utensis, variety eborospina, or is it simply agave utensis, subspecies eborospina? Now I've talked about this before, I fall more on the variety side of things, I'm not a huge taxonomical nerd, but I think it's interesting to discuss the two different points of view. So in 2021, in the Illustrated Handbook of Succulent Plants, Monocotyledons, uh, Egli writes both varieties, and he's talking here about uh, Agave Utensis uh, variety Nevadensis and variety Eborospina, are best regarded as mere dwarf forms with large elongated spines from montane limestone outcroppings. And that book does not go into specifically what differentiates Eborospina from uh, Nevadensis, right? It doesn't talk about the 10, or 20, 10 to 20 centimeter length spines, the ivory white spines, or the coloration. But then in 2022, and I'm gonna butcher this name undoubtedly, um, Hotchdatter in, a, uh, in the Cactus Adventures Journal uh, does a little change up with the taxonomy and he actually calls it a subspecies. He calls it Agave utensis subspecies Eborospina. Again, does not go on to talk about the specific traits of Eborospina, the differentiated from the rest of the uh, species, doesn't talk about the spine length or the colors or anything like that, but does put it in its own subspecies species category. And as I talked about with Kelly Griffin when I interviewed him, his point was that a lot of times botanists and taxonomists really want to describe species and subspecies because then you get to have your name put at the end of it when it's published in academic sources and the same isn't really true with varieties, I guess. Uh, so that may be one thing that's going on here. The current taxonomy for most plants, everybody wants to describe it as a species. And the reason is pretty simple, because if somebody later wants to elevate it to species, your your name would have priority. So there's a tendency for everybody that's out there that's a, a so-called taxonomist is to describe everything they describe as a species. Uh, and again, personally, I fall more on the variety side, which brings up the next point. The reason that I fall on the variety side of the subspecies versus variety debate about Eborospina is that because of those traits that we talked about, the really long spines, the leaf coloration, and then the spine coloration are the three major traits that have been used by botanists going back to 1943 to describe Eborospina specifically, as opposed to Nevadensis or simply subspecies Utahensis. But the problem is, or rather the, the reality is, that it, particularly with leaf color and then terminal spine color, those uh, traits are not binary. It's not, does it have white spines or brown spines or is it green or is it blue? They're kind of on a spectrum, right? There are very blue plants, there are sort of middle blue slash green plants, and then there are very green plants. And the same thing goes with the terminal spine color. The, while the common name for agave, Utsantis eborospina, is ivory spined agave, and the common name for nevadensis is just nevada agave, the terminal spines of both varieties can be fully ivory white, and in both varieties they can also be, you can also find examples in habitat where they are both brown and white, right? So those two traits particularly occur on kind of a spectrum. So that leaves us with this, this third trait, or actually it's the first trait that's mostly mentioned by most taxonomists and botanists when they're describing Eborospina, is the terminal spine length. And I think what's remarkable is that from its first description in 1943 by Hester in 
the Cactus and Succulent Journal, all the way up to, to Geneva in, in 2010's description of it, the one thing that stays very, very uh, stable is that mention of a 10 to 20 centimeter length terminal spine. That is, again, four to eight inch terminal spine. And that spines, uh, agave with spines less than, than four inches are generally categorized as nevadensis. So when we're looking to identify, is this plant subspecies utensis, is it variety nevadensis or subspecies nevadensis, or is it Ebora spina, we can take into context, you know, the, uh, the geography of it. There is a mention where it's the northwesternmost of the entire agave genus. So if we find a plant that's way up in the northwest corner of that region, you know, in not exactly northern Nevada or northern California, but north for the range of agave, then that's, you know, one check mark in the Ebora spina category. If we find the plant's got very green leaves, you know, from courage green to silver green, then that's another check mark on the in the Ebora spina column. If we find that the spines are mostly ivory white or entirely ivory white, that's another check in the Ebora spina column. But the big check, I think, that almost overrules both of those things is the length of the spines. If the spines are longer than 10 centimeters or four inches, then it's probably agave utensis ebora spina. If it's shorter, it's either nevadensis or utensis. Uh, if it's close to four inches, it's almost certainly nevadensis. And if it's well under, then it's probably utensis. So when I'm out in habitat surveying these populations, as I talked about last week about with Project Ebora Spina, when I try to determine, because again, some of my locations that I'm going to be looking at uh, aren't documented in any of the sources, but should based on the geography, you know, they're in the northwest corner of the Agave Range, based on the geology, they have the right limestone substrate, and based on the altitude and the, the, the angle, like which direction the hillside is facing, they should have agave utensis ebora spina populations in those locations, if I find plants there and their spine length, their terminal spine length is less than four inches, is less than 10 centimeters, then in my mind, that's a nevadensis plant and I'm not going to count it in Project Ebora Spina. On the other hand, if I do find plants there in those undocumented locations uh, that are that have spine, terminal spines uh, above 10 centimeters, above four inches, then that to me will be an Ebora Spina plant. So that's gonna be how I identify agave utensis Ebora Spina when I'm going through Project Ebora Spina, is basically the, the terminal spine length. I'll take those other things into context as well, but it's really gonna come down to me to that terminal spine length. Over 10 centimeters, Ebora Spina. Under 10 centimeters, not Ebora Spina. And we've also talked about before where you as collectors can uh, apply this information because there are a lot of sellers online that are lying to you about agave utensis plants and labeling them as Ebora Spina when they're clearly not Ebora Spina. And there's one really, really simple way to tell, is the spine length over 10 centimeters or is it under 10 centimeters? Because it's G Howard Scott Gentry says it, uh, Geneva says it, Hester said it in his first description back in way back in 1943, that above 10 centimeters, that's Ebora Spina. Below 10 centimeters, that's not Ebora Spina. So I would love to hear from you down in the comments. How do you tell if a plant is Ebora Spina or Nevadensis or simply uh, Agave Utahensis? Uh, and thanks for watching.